O God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs of Christ of your glory, and bring us to enjoy its fullness, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verses 12 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you tablets of stone, and the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. When Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain, the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
been reading today is from 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message even more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to the lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please <laughs> mountaintop experiences, yes? Well, this morning I have two examples for you. Here is the first. Last year, Anna and I had the privilege of traveling to Canada to witness two of our friends getting married at the base of a glacier. These two people are hikers, and I don't mean they like walking around the park near their house. I mean, they enjoy going to the base camp of Mount Everest. They've done a week-long hike up the Andes Mountains to the ancient Peruvian city Machu Picchu. While most people's idea of a leisurely trip involves sitting on a beach, theirs most of the time involves some sort of steep incline. They're the type of people who get married at the base of the glacier. While we were there, these friends, Amy and Saqib, told us you guys, you have to go over to Moraine Lake and watch the sunrise. So we woke up at 4 a.m., which was like three hours after the sun had set, and we get to Moraine Lake, we start hiking the trail, knowing that we needed to get to the end of this trail before the sun rose. <clears throat> it's important to know that while Amy and Saqib are hikers, I am not. <laughs> so between the elevation the incline, and the remnants of alcohol in my system from the evening before we were there for a wedding, I was struggling. I mean struggling to the point of tears. 
We tried to stay with a group of people we were with. Anna was coaxing me up the hill, but that only lasted about 15 minutes. So Anna and I turned around, told the group we would meet them at the bottom after the sun was up and shining, and Anna, the brave as she was, would go back with the group going the next morning. There we were, sitting at the edge of this lake at the bottom of the mountain, a half hour later watching the most beautiful sunrise. Another half hour or so after that, our friends come back and we ask them, how was the view? How was the sunrise? And they said, we never made it to the end of the trail. So we left, went back to the hotel, and later that day we asked the newlyweds, why on earth would you send us to that trail? And Amy and Sakib, who have hiked to the base camp of Mount Everest, spent four days hiking in the Andes Mountains, got married at the base of a glacier, looked at each other, looked at us, laughed, and said, you didn't try to hike that trail, did you? That trail is a six hour long trail, and the hardest one up here, the two of us haven't even done that trail. No, you were just supposed to sit at the edge of the lake and watch the sunrise. Anna and I caught the whole thing because of my weakness and the rest of the group searching for a mountaintop experience missed it because they were doing what they thought they should be doing. I felt very vindicated. <laughs> not all mountaintop experiences happen on mountaintops and not all mountaintops are mountaintop experiences. While our friends were headed to what they thought was going to be a mountaintop experience, we found it right at the bottom of the mountain where we were supposed to be. Mountaintop experiences. Here's the second one for today. You wake up in the morning. You are carrying heavy burdens. You're dealing with the thought that tomorrow you head to work again and that you continue with the grind that is literally grinding you down. Or maybe you know that by the end of the day, you will end up watching the news and wondering what on earth is going on in this world. Maybe you will ask questions like the psalmist, why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings rise up in revolt? And why do the princes plot? Maybe you're not able to fall asleep at night because of economic stress or hunger or bills that you don't know how you're going to pay or kids that won't talk to you or classes that keep you up worrying. But today, this morning, you woke up, you got dressed, you got in the car, and you came to church, you came to community, you came to be. And we've gathered not only for the sake of going to church, but to sing together, to listen together, to hear about Moses' mountaintop experience with God. We often recognize, yes, away from the noise of the world. We've gathered to hear about a mountaintop experience of the disciples and Jesus and those biblical figures of old, Moses and Elijah, there with them, all involved in this miraculous, mysterious moment we call the transfiguration. God speaks, this is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. But I told you I was going to tell you about another mountaintop experience, not just rehash the ones from scripture. Getting up this morning, maybe having every reason not to, and coming to be held by community in song and prayer, coming past the still waters that bind us together, those baptismal waters from which God calls us beloved even in our lowest moments. You got up this morning to be fed from this table where we, like Moses, come face to face with God, though we sometimes take it for granted. All of this is a mountaintop experience. We didn't just gather to hear about mountaintop experiences. We gather to have one. Because God is most often recognized away from the noise of the world in those quiet, still places in community. There Anna and I were, sitting on the edge of this lake, not knowing we were having a mountaintop experience, but looking back, sometimes wishing we could have sat there forever. In hindsight, with mountaintop experiences, we might, like the disciple Peter said, think, it's good to be here, Lord, let's set up camp and stay. 
But Jesus and life and work and school and our responsibilities, these all beckon us back down the mountain, away from those moments of rest and restoration. We want to carry those mountaintops with us. And maybe we can't. Because this is my son, my beloved. That's not the only thing God said up on that mountain. God said, listen to him. Listen to Jesus. Listen for that one. Look for him. Find him where you least expect it. In those moments that feel nothing like mountaintops, but instead maybe feel like the deepest valleys. Listen for the voice of God speaking to you, carrying you, lifting you, walking beside you. What you might find is the voice of Jesus speaking to you as to the disciples saying, Get up. Don't be afraid. Find the divine presence in your neighbor. And remember that, yes, while God is most clearly revealed in those mountaintop experiences, that doesn't mean God is only found there. God's most often recognized away from the world, yes. But not all mountaintop experiences happen on mountains. We are, as Paul wrote, eyewitnesses of the majesty of God. We would do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp, Paul says, a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts, rises on this world, rises for all to be warmed by its righteousness together on the mountaintop with God. You are witnesses of the majesty of God today, and you are still witnesses tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. So listen. Listen to God. Listen to one another, because while today we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord, we too might find ourselves transfigured, changed, different, shining, reminded of our belovedness in the, the light of God, fed and nourished, having been empty and depleted, ready to be the light shining in the world for the week ahead. You, beloved of God, are in the midst of the mountaintop, and it is good that we are here. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Equip lay preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Dwell with your whole creation, from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of conservation organizations and protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide and give wisdom to all in authority. Mayors, governors, local leaders, and legislators, our president and national legislators, bring freedom and justice to all nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany with your touch those who are homebound, sick, or isolated. Merciful God, Make us eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice and the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even the unlikely of your people. With our forebears in faith and all who had hoped in you, Teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share God's peace. with your sweetie and I finally get it now uh, on the topic of snacks please continue to sign up for coffee hour for the next few weeks uh, we enter into Lent now so we will need those snacks to keep coming this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday the 22nd we'll have worship here oh wait there's Janine Janine come on in here <laughs> you took all that food Tremendous, just tremendous. So get started on next year. <laughs> yes. Either of those times, I'll be here all day offering ashes uh, to those who would wish. After the early service, the seniors will be going out to lunch at Jack Dolan's pub. Uh, that will be a good group going out. And believe it or not, because of that, Easter flowerers are upon us. There are forms in your bulletin. If you're someone who um, orders flowers for Easter, please get those orders in. Uh, and lastly, we have to tend to our orange bag this week. So come on up. What is in the bag? <laughs> Let's see. Ooh. Okay. Hello. Hello, please. Okay, we have a cow. You all have been bringing in animals a lot of weeks. You're going to really challenge me. This is a cow, right? Okay, does the cow have a name? No? Well, why don't we name him? Does he, does he have a name? No. Okay. Hmm. Does he have a name? What do we know about cows? They give us milk. Yes, they, so they feed us, right? They provide for us. What else do we know about cows? They eat lots of grass. Mm -hmm. What else do we know about cows? Where do they live? 
on farms. And who do they live with? People. What other farm animals are there? Goats. Pigs. Yeah. Chickens. What else? Maybe horses? Lots, lots of different animals come on farms. Llamas, that would be a cool farm. I want to see that farm. All right, so we have this cow who provides for us, who feeds us, who lives in communities with other animals. Do you think there's a message in there for us? What can we learn from cows? Hmm. They eat grass and they need to get milk. Do you know who? feeds us every week in a sort of different way. It doesn't look like dinner. What happens here at this table? Holy communion. God's people gather around this table um, and feed us. So, I mean, we could maybe say that God is like a cow. That would be, that would be a pretty funny way of thinking about God, right? But in the Bible, um, the ancient character of Moses, he goes and he brings his people along to a land, and you know what God says is going to be there for them? Yes. Cat, not quite cat, milk and honey. These sweet, delicious things that God feeds God's people with of old. Now, we don't do milk and honey in communion. That would be a little bit weird if everyone had a nice tall glass of milk. Wouldn't be good for uh, lactose intolerant people either. God feeds us, and God has fed God's people throughout all of time using the gifts of animals, too. So let's pray and give thanks for the way God feeds us. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for feeding us. We thank you for animals and all the parts of creation that nourish, us. that nourish us. Help us remember those who don't have a lot to eat. And help us help them that as you feed us, we can feed others. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So next week is a season called Lent, and we're going to take a break from the orange bag, okay? So I'm not going to hand it out this week, but you can take it back with your cow. Um, and it still doesn't have a name. So, yeah, very good. Thank you. You can head back to your seats. And we will continue with the offering.
break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of personal power. Shape us as people of your justice and your freedom.
Wednesday, and we'll be burning the, the not the beautiful fish that the Sunday schoolers made, but the fish with the prayers on them. The prayers will be lifted up to God. And so, Sunday schoolers, we have to carry off this net during our sending hymn, all right? So will you come and help me pick it up? It's kind of heavy with all these fish on it. It's a big catch, one might say. Here you go. You might really want to grab this. Okay, and when we are singing, you can lead us out today, all right? Receive the blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen.